Are you ready? Yeah. Daddy. All right, first stop, we're gonna need some helium balloons. Success! <laughs> Come take a seat, my queen. You sit there and I'll untangle this for you. Where do I start? <laughs> Oh, now you're taller than me, that's not right. In today's video, we're going to be doing some levitation photography, and if you don't know what that is, here are some examples. Help me, I'm putting away! Now, by the time this video comes out, these bluebells are not gonna be around, but I just wanted a nice backdrop for today's video. If you do like bluebells, then I'll put a link to my bluebell video up here. We are being very careful not to tread on any of the bluebells. We've actually found a patch where there are no bluebells. So we are being respectful to the woodland here. Second thing is, if you're not familiar with this young lady, this is Chloe, she's my daughter. Today, she is my assistant, she's the model, and she has actually helped me out on a few other YouTube videos before. So welcome back to my channel, Chloe. Thank you. I think the comments from the other videos that you're in, everybody was just saying how brilliant Chloe is. She is so entertaining, especially when she's had loads of candy floss. Today, we are working with Chloe and the intention is to get two shots. One of the levitation shots, she's going to be standing on the stool and that's why we've got the helium balloons because we're going to recreate a scene where it looks as though she's being lifted up to the sky <laughs> with the helium balloons. The second shot, she's going to be lying horizontally on the top of the stool and then using Photoshop, we're gonna remove the stool and it's gonna look like she's just levitating off the ground. So that's the intention. We've done this before. About five years ago, we came to this exact same woods and we did the levitation photography with Chloe. So this is the first time we've done this. We know the technique, we know the mistakes that we made before. So I'm gonna share with you today my tips and tricks on how to get this right and to avoid some of the problems that I came across the last time I did this. So let's talk about settings. In order for this to work, you want everything to be as consistent and manual as possible. Ben, tell me what they need to keep exactly the same. Now, first of all, we're gonna to have to assume that that sunlight is not gonna change dramatically from the beginning and the end of these photographs of this video clip. So in order for this composite video to work, you need to keep everything the same. So that includes focusing, put your lens to manual. You do not want your camera and lens focusing back and forth. You want your shutter speed to stay the same. You want your aperture to stay the same. You want your ISO to stay the same. And you want any color profiles or white balance to remain exactly the same. That is how you create a perfect stitch. Now, if you can pre-visualize everything in Photoshop, it's gonna make your life much, much easier. So just think ahead to the different layers you're going to have. As a minimum, you're gonna have two layers. You're going to have the base layer, which is the scene, the background without your subject in, and then you're gonna have your top layer, which is going to be your subject with an Ikea stool, and then you're going to erase the stool using some blending modes and things like that, which we'll get into at the end of this video. If you were to shoot up towards your subject and they're standing on a ladder, can't see the soles of their feet. That's going to be obviously on the top rung of the ladder. Therefore, you cannot Photoshop out the rung of the ladder and reveal the underside of their shoe. So you've got to plan ahead. When you're looking at your scene, think, okay, if I erase that object, what's going to be revealed behind it? Let's talk about the photography. I create what I refer to as a base image at the beginning and the end of the shoot. So let's just say you take a base image, then you put your subject into the frame and you spend two or three minutes posing them and taking the photographs and then the light may have changed. You may not have noticed it, but over the course of two or three minutes, it could have changed dramatically. Therefore, your base image is not very close to the images of your model anymore. So that's why I take a base image or reference image at the beginning and the end of the shoot. And I need you to just do the tiniest of little hops so that your foot is not flat on the top of the stool. Are you ready? Yeah. Daddy. That's it, that's all you've got to do. You're doing amazing, well done. So as you can see, it's not easy. Chloe is 10 years old and she still felt a bit uncomfortable about balancing on one leg and kind of jumping up. So if you're gonna do this with your kids, just make sure they're absolutely comfortable jumping from a height. Now, let's have a look at the second image. That's going to be using the Ikea stall again, and then I'm going to get Chloe to lie down on her back, 
and then I'll do one with the balloon and then one without the balloon. And then I can just pick and choose which one I prefer. So one of the important things, I've made sure that Chloe is wearing a dress which has got some flowy elements to it. And the reason for this is I want some of the fabric to overlap the stool. Because if you didn't have that and you were just wearing a top or a jumper, where you lie down on a piece of furniture, your back would be flat. Last time I did this, I was trying to clone out the IKEA stool and the back of Chloe was just perfectly straight, didn't look correct. So I had to add creases. I had to add some imperfections so that it didn't look like she was lying down on a piece of furniture. There, there will be spiders, we are outside, it's okay. Yeah, just so that your bum is overlapping the edge so that I can't see the flat section. And then it's okay for you to be losing your balance because you're levitating. I'm gonna go and take some photos. Are you ready? Okay, come on, have a look. See what you think. <laughs> that looks really weird. It Good. really looks like I'm flying without the stool. Yeah, well imagine when I remove this stool in Photoshop afterwards. All right, one more then. Okay, not the top step. I don't want you being taller than me. That's not allowed. I'm the star of the show. Are you the star of the show? I think that that was quite successful, but we have not edited the photographs yet. So that is still to be determined. But the technique is right. From your perspective, from the model's perspective, one to 10, how difficult was that? Eight out of 10. Eight out of 10. Okay, so if you're gonna do this, you need to do your scrunches, you need to do sit-ups, you need strong tummy muscles, I right? I really do. Yeah, what about <gasps> neck muscles? Because your head is like that. Uh. <laughs> yeah, you really do. Yeah? <laughs> right, we've got the shots in the bag. Let's head back to the office now and I'll talk you through how I edit them. Okay, now that we're back in the office, let's jump into Photoshop. Okay, so what you can see here, I've got a selection of images of Chloe just uh, pulling different poses. And as I scroll through them, essentially I'm looking for a pose where she's got her arm and the balloons higher than her head. So that obviously goes along with the illusion that she's being lifted up. That one is a successful option. That one's good. That one's good, although the wind was blowing the balloons a bit to the side, so it doesn't look like she's been pulled upwards. And then that is the base image without her. Yeah, it's literally the last one that I photographed is the best one. Sometimes you find that you take loads of photographs and then you just feel like you've got the shot and that's what's happened here. So 8133 is my select. So I'm going to copy that and then I'm going to paste that over the top of this image. Now what you'll see if we go to the layers, for some reason, my screen recording software hasn't been picking up the Layers tab, even though I could see the Layers tab. So I'll show you an overlay now, just to show you how simple the Photoshop layers are. You've got Layer 0, which is the base image, Layer 1, which is the photograph and the, the layer of Chloe. That top layer has got a layer mask, and then you just use the brush tool to brush through that, and then revealing the base layer. Apologies that it didn't record the layers, but there's nothing complicated to this process at all. So I've copied and pasted my favorite image over the top of the base image, and you'll see here that the camera has moved slightly between those two images. So the first thing I'm going to do is select both of those, go edit, and then go to auto align layers. So now those two layers are perfectly aligned. If I switch the top layer on and off, the background is staying still apart from some leaves that were blowing in the wind. But now I'm content that both of those layers are in the same place. Just going to crop that slightly because sometimes when you auto align layers it will just rotate or come in a little bit and I don't want to just have one or two loose pixels around the edge okay and quite simply we're just going to zoom in a little bit create a layer mask on this layer go to the brush tool increase the size of the brush and we are going to paint that out and I've started with a really easy example. There you go, that is how simple that image is. That was nice and easy, Photoshop work is done. I'm going to take that back into Lightroom and then I'm going to apply some presets just to make it my style. Here's that image. Right, now the second image is a bit more tricky and I'll show you the mistake that I made. This image really shows you what the problem is and this is a mistake that you should definitely avoid. 
you can see here in this image, if you were trying to remove this stool, there is nothing behind this once you've erased it. It's not gonna reveal the arm because there is no photograph of the underside of her arm. So if you're doing this, avoid this problem. So you'll see in the subsequent images, Chloe's lifting her left arm up and then you're not gonna run into the same problem. This is good. You can see that she is, it looks like she's straining to keep her head up, which doesn't look natural in the first few. I've made a decision. I'm going with this one, okay. I like the pose and I think this image could work really well. So let's copy and paste that over the top of the other image, which is the base image. Exactly the same process as I did with the first image, but this one's a bit more complicated. I've got to do a bit of a, a tighter, tighter brush around Chloe's arms and body. Right, so we've added our layer mask. Go to the brush tool. And at the moment I've got my brush set to a soft edge just because the majority of the brushwork that I do is brushing in skies and things like that where you don't want a harsh edge. So decrease the size of the brush. Just going around her arm there. There you go, that looks good. Always zoom out as you do Photoshop work so you can get just a, a bigger picture just to see if anything looks unnatural. Uh, right, okay, so you can see we're gonna run into a problem because Chloe's dress did not completely cover up uh, the stool in this area. Plus you can end up looking like your subject having a very flat back with this. So sometimes you do have to do a bit of Photoshop work, copying and pasting some of the fabric to make it look a bit more natural and a bit more like it's actually hanging. I think what we'll do is on this top layer here, copy that, paste that, And I'm just going to use this to cover up some of the stuff. So you can see what I'm doing. I'm just copy and pasting bits of her dress to cover up the problem areas. And you could spend ages on this. I'm not gonna to spend too long because you're only gonna notice it when you really, really zoom in. Once again, I'm going to take that back into Lightroom, add some presets, and here's that image. Right, the next image I think is the most fun because we've tied some balloons around her waist which is kind of adding to the illusion. So looking at the different options we've got here, this one she's smiling so I don't think that kind of suits the mood of the image. It's supposed to be kind of mysterious, the fact that she's levitating. So maybe she's hypnotized or she's asleep. So the idea that she is smiling or laughing is probably not the right approach. So we've got two images here, like this one or this one, very subtle difference. We'll go with this one because the balloons are more upright. It's a bit of a windy day, so actually the balloons are getting thrown around quite a lot. And what do we do next? You guessed it, layer mask, and watch the stool magically disappear. My advice would be to do lots of different poses, overshoot, get as many images as you possibly can, because if you end up with your left arm or something behind the stool, you run into problems. So mix up the poses so that it gives you options. Just took off a bit of her arm, a bit too much. This is why doing layer masks is key. So you can just kind of flip back and forth by using the X key to reveal and conceal. Because their dress is partially transparent, okay? You can, if you look really closely, see the legs of the stool behind her dress. I hadn't thought of that. Okay, learn from my mistakes here, don't do that. I'm just gonna have to um, kind of play with the contrast and make sure that that doesn't come through in the final edit. All right, you know the drill, Lightroom, preset, here's the image. Okay, and that is how you edit these photographs, back to the younger me in the woods. So the techniques I've been showing you today apply to any sort of digital manipulation, composite images you're thinking of. I'll show you a few examples here. One of them, I essentially removed my torso just by having the background, didn't move the camera at all, kept all the settings exactly the same, and then I deleted parts of me to create this image. And then another example I took of Chloe again, took the background image, and then I put Chloe into the scene, 
put an umbrella up, and then I made that umbrella just dissolve into a cloud of butterflies. So you can see, just come up with an idea, and then as long as you get the technique right, it'll be much easier in Photoshop. Now it's time to say goodbye. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you've got any questions, then let me know in the comments down below. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and we'll see you in the next video.